Well, four minutes of that BBC documentary, Baby P, The Untold Story. In a way, it's two stories, the causes of the death and the way the blame was subsequently apportioned. Well, The Sun says about the case, The Sun's campaign was a reflection of the anger our readers felt towards the perpetrators of this heinous crime and sought to bring those responsible to justice. No one doubts that Sharon Shoesmith ended up shouldering a lot of the public venom. You saw her in the film and she's here with us now. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the most favourable media coverage you've had since the Baby P case. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't mean there, isn't, there aren't difficult questions for you and for mm. Haringey mm. uh, to answer about the case. Let me, though, before we get to some of those, just ask, what has become of your life since? Well, I haven't worked again since that day. Um, and since the 1st of December 2008, I've not been able to work again, so I'm not able to earn a living. Have you applied for jobs? I have applied for several hundred jobs. Um, people are either afraid of attracting the tabloids, in particular the sun, or if it's child-related or government-related, they're afraid of, of, of attracting maybe parents' criticism from parents or, or whatever. You know, even to invigilate an examination, for example, children will go home and say, you know, you know who was there today. So it's been a closed door just about everywhere. But um, I've taken up studying. Um, I did a, a psychotherapy course to begin with, and I'm now in the final stages of a PhD. Mm. So I've tried to keep busy. We're we should be clear, because at, at no point do you think you were the real victim in this whole sorry saga, do you? Or, or, or do you? I mean, because I think some of the public felt, hang on, the baby is the victim, not the, not oh, the absolutely. head of, social, of children's services. Absolutely. Mm. Peter was the victim. Peter was a victim of familial child homicide. Mm. But, you know, we're, we've all been victims in this. And I suppose what I would want to say to you is that, you know, the film absolutely leaves me just horrified. And yet I was in it, and yet I knew most of what was in the film. Um, but in many ways, I think we have to step back, all of us, step back from this, put to one side what we think the story was, and begin to reflect on that. Um, and to reflect on our different investments in it, because I think we're all victims in it. And, you know, familial child homicide is a very serious social issue. And I think during the story, um, people began to learn something about it and people were horrified at what they were learning about the realities of familial child homicide. Well, let's, let's go on to some of the, the, the difficult questions because it, I mean even though the report the, the, the documentary obviously finds as do most people who've looked at it that there was there were multiple failures through a number of different agencies not yes, just yours. Yes. <clears throat> that doesn't mean there weren't failures at yours, does yes. it? And I mean, I mean yes. you would accept there were yes. serious failures at Haringey. Uh, it depends how we're going to define serious, doesn't it? I mean, this, this, is, this is difficult if you say serious failures. What is a serious failure? Well, it's, for example, you, you know, Baby P's visited, unannounced by the social worker in June. Face is bruised. Mother claims he's been in a fight with another, skept uh, another child. Your social worker is sceptical, calls the police. The police say the child should be taken away. There have been other cases, two other cases, in which this injured child has been taken to hospital. Mm -hmm. And a senior social worker intervenes and says, no, leave him with the parent, leave, leave him with the mother. Well, that's a very diluted version, really, of a, a, a debate between professionals. And at all times, professionals agreed with the decisions that were made. Uh, that's absolutely clear. Um, it's hindsight. Yeah, no, it's I understand. Risk, I understand that this sort of happened. All those but the things. cumulative errors in the absolutely, case of this child absolutely. were so. Yes. They were just astonishing. It to is most people. How could. Breathtaking. There were so yes. many. Because I just picked the third one. I could have picked the fourth or the fifth or the sixth again and again. It mm, mm, seemed to come up. Mm. No, it is. It is breathtaking when you look at it all together. Um, but okay, but look, if it's, if it's a system problem, and you can't pin it on Maria Ward, the social worker. It wasn't one rogue social worker who, who malevolently didn't bother to mm. do her job properly. If it's a system problem, if it's something about the way the thing operates, isn't it the person who's running that system, who's responsible for children's services, who ultimately has to take the blame? It's a simplistic explanation, I feel. And it's too simplistic. Uh, a, a well, position. Out, what is simplistic about the sort of notion of people who are earning more than 100,000 a year taking responsibility for tragic outcomes that occur on their watch? Well, is that I just... believe I took responsibility and I believe throughout that I was entirely accountable. Um, 
it, to my role and to what I, it was I needed to do. Now, you have to separate that out from the public emotion and say the public were absolutely understandable as to how they felt. But you can't be accountable to a public who have been told lies, who have been how, told in, in, about in, things that didn't actually right. happen and in quite what like way, that. In what way were you accountable? And this, is, this gets to the heart of the yes, really the interesting dance. conversation yes, yes. about whether the mob just searched for blame or whether yes. there's some sensible process by which we... Yes. Appoint. In what way, when you say you were accountable, what does that mean? As a director of children's services, I would be accountable to the council, yeah, to the chief executive and the leader of the council, to look in detail as to our conduct, our conduct being the social workers. Um, what was the social worker conduct in this case? And we looked at that in some considerable depth. And we, once we had Eddie Carmi's uh, report, we took that away and looked again in, in, in minute detail of what it was these social workers had done or not done. Now, it being Haringey Council, there was a lot of concern about are we sacking these social workers, right? Clearly, that would have been a, a big concern for Haringey. And we undertook um, a system, of, uh, I mean, we, we, we used Haringey's system to look at their conduct in the case. And the chief executive, the leader of the council, um, were all in agreement that there was no gross misconduct. Now, this is very important. Right. Now, th and that's me, been, that, but that is, is a crucial intent thing. This is intent and willfulness um, gross yeah. misconduct. So it, there and wasn't there was gross none. misconduct. There was none. So it was the, it, it, that is why the social worker shouldn't be sacked. You've agreed that. Yes. That's why someone else higher up has to take responsibility. And I, I just wonder whether the public don't have a right sometimes to say, look, we don't like the outcome of this. This does not meet a standard that we expect. And we expect people in responsible jobs who actually set up the systems which have failed or let someone down, mm. we expect them to take the can. And it may be sometimes a bit unfair on a politician to have to resign a job because something in their department has gone wrong. Or mm -hmm. a senior person in children's mm -hmm. services to have to resign a job, even though it wasn't a personal mistake. It's just somebody has to take the So it's public accountability is what you're talking well, about. Well, it's making public sure that, the, that, the, that yes. the people in authority have a, a certain incentive not to let these things happen. Because but you can't they... be publicly accountable to a public who is ill-informed. Ill-informed. I think if they were misinformed, informed, they would have said it doesn't matter. Whether it was 60 visits or 17 visits, it was too many visits and the outcome was all too tragic. But we can't, we can't simply sack people. Now, you have to remember that... It's said in the film, one child every 10 days. I mean, my understanding is one child every five days, every week. Um, this is dying. dying at the hands yes. of the parent. Yeah. And I think the real issue here is about familial child homicide. And it's about all of our views of familial... And so would you say let, for no, other just, cases... Just, would let you me, say, okay. just let me finish. You know, it, it's about all of our views on this and how we feel about this, about harm to children. And Ed Balls... But we know how we feel about harm to this. children. Yes, but I think maybe we, re we need reminded. Now, Ed Balls could not have gone on the television and said, this is a tragic case, which it was, uh, and 500 children have died between Victoria Columbia mm. and Peter. This is a serious issue for our society. Let me ask you this. this happens. I've taken that point. Let me just ask you this. Do you basically think, in other cases, Rotherham, for example, uh, which has had the awful catalogue of, of standard of, of, of children's care and, and overlooking huge amounts of abuse of young people, that in these cases the public is simply wrong to look for someone to lose their job? I think there needs to be an honest process. Yeah, an honest process. That's what I would say to you. I'm very much behind accountability. I've practised it, you know, all, all my career. But it's got to be honest accountability. Um, I don't know But I the don't know whether your notion Rotherham. of accountability is what the public understand by it. Well, it's this, not this quite is, taking responsibility. Yeah, this is the disconnect. And saying, you know, when you have public accountability and you have harm to children, the two coming together are quite explosive. Now, your public accountability and the banks and the recession, yeah, isn't quite as explosive, is it, uh, as this particular subject? And I think it's a very, it's a very unique subject in so that So Joyce sense. Thacker in Rotherham... I don't know the detail. I don't Rotherham. know the detail of that, and I don't think you know either with respect. 
um, what the detail is because there's been no process. We have a, a, a chair of a select committee who just is... And your I view of go. the politician's role in your case, David Cameron up the temperature in the Commons, Ed Balls responded to that, called this immediate review. Yeah, What's and what we know, what What's we've known in the aftermath has been the interdependency between the politicians and the press and the police. You know, there's an interdependency there. Um, there were political motives for all of that. Uh, and I have some sympathy, actually, with some of the things that Ed Balls has been saying. Uh, that might be unusual for me to, to say that. Uh, but, you know, you, you can't have these knee-jerk reactions. You've got to have some kind of process and some kind of evidence uh, with which to take action. Sharon Shoesmith, thanks for coming in. Yeah.